This is lesson 6.2, parallelograms. Your objectives are to recognize and apply the properties of the sides and angles of parallelograms and recognize and apply the properties of the diagonals of parallelograms. A quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel is a parallelogram. Here are four important properties of parallelograms. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary. And if it has one right angle, then it has four right angles. So keep track of all the properties of it and use those as we work the problems out. Find the value of each variable. And even though it doesn't say, all of these are parallelograms. So we'll use the properties of parallelograms. For number one, since this parallelogram has a right angle, then it has four right angles. That's one of the properties. So each angle is a right angle, which means that 3x has to equal 90. Divide both sides by 3, and x is 30. Since each angle is a right angle here, then 4y also equals 90. Divide both sides by 4, and y is 22.5. If a parallelogram has one right angle, then it has four right angles. On number two, we're dealing with angle measures and side measures here. Look at the angles first. This parallelogram has a right angle, which means all four angles are right angles. So 6x has to equal 90. Divide both sides by 6 and x is 15. If a parallelogram has one right angle, then it has four right angles. Now look at the sides. Opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, which means that 8y has to equal 88. Divide both sides by 8, and y is 11. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent, and if it has one right angle, then it has four right angles. Number four. On this one, we're dealing with angle measures. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent, but I don't want to say 3y equals 12x. I also know that consecutive angles are supplementary, and I do have two consecutive angles that just use a x. So those two angles are supplementary, which means that 6x plus 12x equals 180. Solve that for x, 6x and 12x make 18x. Divide by 18 and x is 10. Now since x is 10, I can substitute in for 12x. And that angle is 120 degrees. Since opposite angles are congruent, instead of saying 3y equals 12x, I can now say 3y equals 120. Divide both sides by 3, and y is 40. In a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent, and consecutive angles are supplementary. Number 6. In this parallelogram, we're dealing with the sides, and opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. So I can say that 30x equals 150. Divide both sides by 30, and x is 5. The other pair of opposite sides is also congruent, but I don't want to say that 2y equals 72x. Instead, substitute the 5 in for the x, which gives you 360 for the bottom side. 
Opposite sides are congruent, so 2y equals 360. Divide both sides by 2, and y is 180. Opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. The diagonals of parallelograms have important properties as well. The diagonals bisect each other, so the two halves of each diagonal will be equal, and each diagonal separates the parallelogram into two congruent triangles, so you can use congruent triangle properties as well. Find the value of each variable. And once again, all of these are parallelograms. Number one. In this parallelogram, the diagonals are drawn. And one of the properties of a parallelogram is that the diagonals bisect each other. So each one of those diagonals is cut in half. The two halves are equal. On one of them, 3x has to equal 12, because those halves are equal. Divide by 3, and x equals 4. For the other diagonal, since it's bisected, the two halves are equal as well. So 4y equals 8. Divide both sides by 4, and y is 2. In a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other, so make the halves equal. Here's a parallelogram with diagonals drawn. I know that the diagonals bisect each other, so the 2y and the 28 are the same, and the 4x and the missing segment measure is the same. And since we have two of the halves marked congruent, I know that their other halves also have to be congruent. The 2y matches the 28, so it gets a single hash mark. And the missing one and the 4x also get a single hash mark. So what we end up having here are four congruent diagonals. So let's solve. 4x has to equal 28. They each have a single hash mark, so they're congruent. Divide by 4 and x is 7. Since the diagonals bisect each other, 2y equals 28. Divide by 2, and y is 14. In a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. Find the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram ABCD with the given vertices. For number 7, we have the parallelogram with these vertices. So plot those points and draw the parallelogram. And if we're looking for the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals, we have to remember the property of the diagonals of a parallelogram. And the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So if these diagonals are cut in half, then I need to find the midpoint of each diagonal. So let's draw the diagonals, and then we'll find the midpoint of each one. According to the graph, it looks like it's on the coordinates 3, 2. Now let's use the midpoint of each diagonal to make sure. For diagonal AC, let's use those coordinates to find the midpoint. x plus x divided by 2, y plus y divided by 2, That gives you the coordinates 3, 2. So it works out for that diagonal. 
Now let's check the other diagonal. For diagonal BD, use those coordinates x plus x divided by 2, y plus y divided by 2, 5 plus 1 divided by 2 is 3, 8 plus negative 4 divided by 2 is 2. So it works out. You can see from the way the graph is drawn that it's on the point 3 comma 2, and you can verify it by doing the midpoint of each diagonal. You do the midpoint because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other, and that midpoint is at that intersection.